Hello to all the lovely children out there. We are back again with a new chapter from history today. Well, children, uh, you have already learnt about the Delhi Sultans or the Delhi Sultanate, isn't it? Before starting the uh, first chapter, the very first chapter in history, I told you that class seven's history deals with primarily the medieval period of Indian history, which will of course include the Muslim rulers, their efficacy and their extensive empire. Right. So today we are back again with after the Sultanate period, the major or the glorious period of Indian history, one of the glorious period of Indian history was the Mughal Empire. So today we will see who were the Mughals, how they started ruling the country and what was their speciality or in what ways they tried to, uh, you know, bring back the uh, Indian glory. So, without wasting any time, any more time, let's get started. Well, children, uh, we can see that uh, more or less you know about the Mughals, isn't it? In your lower classes, you have read that who was the founder of the Mughal Empire? Who was it? Yes, of course, the name that is blinking in your mind, that is none other than Babur. Right, so he was the founder of the Mughal Empire. Well, we will see that they created an empire and accomplished what had hitherto seemed impossible for a short period of time. All right, from the later half of the 16th century, they expanded their kingdom from Agra and Delhi until in the 17th century they controlled nearly all of the subcontinent because if we look at the Indian map just after the death of Aurangzeb which happened in the year 1707 we will see that the entire India almost was under the Mughals so we can understand how powerful they were how efficient they were and how glorious their reign had been well, we will see that today we all know that the Prime Minister of India addresses the nation on Independence Day from the ramparts of the Red Fort in Delhi, which was actually the residence of the Mughal em uh, emperors. Okay, So, at Red Fort, they is to, used to dwell and that was their official residence. Well, now going to the next phase, that is, who were the Mughals? The Mughals were the descendants of the two great lineages of rulers. So from their mother's side, they were the descendants of the Chengiz Khan who died in the, uh, at the age uh, in, uh, in the year 1227. Who was Chengiz Khan? The ruler of the Mongol tribe, China and the Central Asia, extremely powerful and infamous, all right. From their, um, you know, father's side, they were uh, the successor of the Tamur, okay. The Taimur, who was he? He was the ruler of Iran, Iraq and modern day Turkey. So, we can see that from both mother's side and the father's side, the royal blood, the, they were having these royal blood, which actually gave them the courage, which actually paved the path of their success. So, both genetically and both physically, they were extremely efficient, extremely powerful and the rulers of almost the whole of the subcontinent. This was because, alright, however, the Mughals did not like to be called Mughal or Mongol. This was because the Chengiz Khan's memory was associated with the massacre of innumerable people. It was also linked with the Uzbeks, their Mongol competitors. All right, so they don't like to be called Mughals or Mongols because they don't want to remember Chengiz Khan's, you know, um, all the misdeeds that he had done because he was uh, not very, um, uh, his name was not uh, taken very uh, famously. Though he, uh, he had conquered a lot of uh, area, but they were all, uh, um, you know, of his, out of his misdeeds. All right. Now we will go into the primary thing, uh, pri prim primary thing for which we remember a king or a queen. So that was the military campaigns 
Babur, the first Mughal emperor who reigned uh, between 1526 to 1530, succeeded to the throne of Fargana in 1494 with, when he was only 12 years old. He was forced to leave his ancestral throne due to the invasion of another Mongol group, the Uzbeks. Okay, from, so from the name only you can understand that they belong to Uzbekistan. All right, so the Uzbeks had troubled uh, Babur uh, during his um, uh, during his tenure between 1526 to 1530, and uh, for which he had to uh, leave his ancestral throne. All right. Now, after years of wandering, he seized Kabul in 1504, all right. In 1526, he defeated the Sultan of Delhi, Ibrahim Lodi, at Panipat and captured Delhi and Agra. So, that marked the first battle of Panipat in 1526, which was fought between Babur and Ibrahim Lodi, which actually marked the end of the Sultanate period in India and starting of the Mughal dominancy. All right, okay. So now we will see that you will be having few charts uh, in the next pages uh, of your book, which will actually tell you about the um, you know the successes of the Mughals. All right. Now the uh, the Afghans were an immediate threat to the uh, Mughal authority when they started to rule. Okay. Uh, so, their re relationship between the Mughals and the um, uh, uh, homes, it is also very clear from few of the pictures. Okay, As you will go through the book in detail, you will understand. Now, there are various tables here, table 1, 2, 3 like that. You will uh, be able to read the name of the successors, their major campaign and events that happened to the different Mughal rulers starting from Babur till Aurangzeb. So, do not miss all these things. Please go through these informations. They will help you to know the rulers better. Now we are coming to the traditions of succession. Now how this used to happen. The Mughals did not believe in the rule of primogeniture where the eldest son inherited his father's estate. Okay, So you have learned a new word. Remember this. So they did not believe in this. Rather, they believed they followed the Mughal and the Timurid uh, customs of um, uh, coparcenary inheritance or a, div or a division of the inheritance amongst all the sons. All right. So they had divided this under, uh, um, you know, amongst the different uh, sons. So this is that is how they used to follow that that was their uh, main um, you know rule of the succession. Now Mughal relations with other rulers. Now we will see how were how were the relations with the other countries. We will notice that the Mughal rulers campaigned constantly against rulers who refused to accept their authority. But as the Mughals became powerful, many rulers also joined them voluntarily. So. Basically, they fought uh, against the uh, states or the region or the provinces which actually did not accept, did not accept their authority, or they tried to uh, have their uh, or they tried to establish their own power. So the Mughals actually tried to capture those provinces at first. But again, there were few provinces which voluntarily joined the Mughals because they were the most powerful forces of the 16th century so they joined hand with the Mughals naturally so among uh, all these powers major were the Rajputs they had a good uh, example um, they, they uh, had a very good tie with the Mughals many of them married their daughters into Mughal families and received high positions but many resisted as well uh, well we all know that the greatest of uh, great Mughal ruler was Akbar. He was known for his philanthropic nature, for his broad-minded, um, uh, broad-minded broad activities. Okay, he uh, was uh, not at all uh, religiously rigid. He was more uh, moderate, and he his views were extremely, um, you know, appreciated. So he was married 
to a Rajput princess we all know Jodhabai. So from this, from this matrimonial tie we can understand that the Mughals actually tried to uh, be in good relations with uh, these provinces so that in time of need they can help them okay with their soldiers with their um, other political views the sisodia rajputs refused to accept the mughal authority for a long time so the, these are the uh, provinces which actually refused the uh, you know the dominance of the mughals so among them we are getting the names of the sisodia rajputs once defeated however they were honorably treated by the mughals given their lands which was called watan back as assignments or called watan jagir the careful balance between defeating but not humiliating their opponents enabled the Mughals to extend their influence over many kings and chieftains. But it was difficult to keep the balance all the time. Okay? Aurangzeb insulted Shivaji when he came to accept the Mughal authority. So children, we will see that in a, the, in a vast empire like a Mughal Empire where we have had a lot of successor not every king was of same nature it is not possible also isn't it where in on uh, where in one side we are getting the we get the name of Akbar who was uh, so uh, you know kind I would say who was so liberal uh, who was so you know um, accommodative to the other province um, rules and regulations about other rituals being a complete uh, being a devoted muslim he uh, he always preached uh, the values of the other um, religion he re respected other religions okay so why at the uh, so in one side we are getting the names of akbar who was uh, who is still now remembered for his um, you know for his um, um, political efficacy for his uh, for, for for actually all the all the reforms that he had taken for uh, in favor um, uh, of his countrymen this at the same time on the other hand we are getting the names of Aurangzeb okay Aurangzeb had killed uh, had not spared his brothers had not spared uh, his own father to uh, you know to um, ascend uh, to ascend the throne so he was a ruthless he was a rigid he was a stubborn ruler so uh, where in one side Akbar tried to keep uh, you know very good relations with the foreign uh, and the other provinces but not uh, always because we we will read in detail in the next uh, class that how Aurangzeb had uh, relations with other countries he did not have a very good tie with the uh, Marathas which were again a very very powerful force um, uh, from the west okay so the, he did not had a very good tie with Shivaji he insulted Shivaji and uh, of course the um, consequence was a war so we will uh, look into it later on in the next class till then you will go through all the tables which to give, uh, give you a complete detail about all the Mughal successors. They are interesting, they are giving a worth read. So do not skip that, go through it. If you have any question, please comment and till then, take care. Mm -hmm.